ReZero is an old anime for me, and one that's had a lot of impact on both my anime tastes and my channel. In fact, it helped develop an early interest in anime for me. ReZero was my 1, 2, 3, minus 2, carry the 4, fifth-ish anime that I've ever watched. And even back then, I knew it was a good anime. In fact, I loved it so much, I decided to show this anime to my cousins, girlfriend, and even watched it in the living room while my parents were there. That didn't last long. After showing it to a lot of people, however, I started noticing a big disconnect between myself and others who have watched the series, and it had to do with the main character, Subaru. I personally really liked the character. However, he was hated among one of my cousins, my roommates, and my now ex-girlfriend, Subaru Unrelated. When I asked them why they didn't like him, they would normally respond with something like Subaru is annoying or he's entitled, and I would respond with, that's the entire point. In many ways, he's exactly the kind of character an isekai protagonist should be. Someone with a lack of experience about interacting with the world, and someone learning to interact with this world for the first time. What's more important, however, is his interactions with those around him. Simply put, Subaru is actually a toxic main character, and his actions not only bring out the worst in those around him, but hurts those that he cares about which is actually what makes him a great character. Not only does this toxic behavior make him interesting, it's essential to ReZero's story, and is one of the key driving forces that makes this anime so highly rated, whether the fanbase realizes this or not. An odd claim to make, but I believe there is a lesson that can be learned through his behavior, and not only will this lesson explain why ReZero became so popular, but also a lesson that can be learned by shonen anime in general. But before we go in any farther on that, I need to clear something up. Subaru isn't only a toxic character, and if he was, he wouldn't be compelling or interesting. The first 12 episodes are mostly devoted to showing the audience his positive traits, while only hinting at his character flaws. Subaru is compassionate enough to help Amelia after she went out of her way to help him, brave enough to save Rem, clever enough to find the curse on the village, and kind of an idiot. <laughs> These traits aren't suddenly introduced either, as you get to watch him argue to himself on why he should go out of his way to help others, making every good trait about him realistic. These admirable traits give the audience a reason to continue to root for him, even when he's messing up. It also gives us an important distinction about Subaru as a character. He's not evil, he's toxic. In many ways, he's a lot like those who might hurt us in real life. He doesn't want to hurt those around him. In fact, he wants what's best for them. But his personality complex is what causes him to hurt himself, and his toxic ideals are what causes him to hurt others around him. So let's begin with the most important relationship he has, which is with Amelia. Sorry, Rem fans. The important thing to know about Subaru is he's never been in a romantic relationship before, and has no experience on how to properly treat Amelia. This is a common issue a lot of teens and young adults have. In fact, to learn more about it, we can simply take a look outside. All women are queens. If she breathes, she's a god. Well, that's enough outside. Forever. Simps versus incels. Two ideologies, and while they might seem opposite, they're actually two sides of the same coin. Incels see humans as bound by their physical chemistry, and as such, believe that human reasoning and decision making can be boiled down to mere equations. While some incels believe this for males too, all of them believe it for women. They rob each woman of their individuality, and don't see her as a rational individual, rather as an idolized version of her that fits their worldview. Simps seem like the opposite. Simps instead hold on to views of women that they are all admirable, in control, and perfect, and thus idolize them. By evaluating a woman to unrealistic levels for any member of humanity, you realize that instead of looking at her, they're looking at an idolized version of her, one that doesn't exist. Much like incels, they aren't looking at the woman for who she is, an individual. 
and instead consistently sees an imaginary version of them in their head. It's the same issue that the incel has, where they don't treat the woman like a woman, but instead they treat her like an ideal. This is the issue that Subaru has with his relationship with Amelia. He idolizes her and expects her to understand, not realizing that she herself isn't perfect. The actions that he does aren't for her, it's for him. He feels like the world should act the way that he believes it to work, and for Amelia to behave the way that he believes her to behave. And when it comes down to it, it reveals what Subaru feels, entitled. A trait that's true from his relationship with Amelia to his interactions with Cruz. He clearly feels that the world would be a lot better of a place if people just listened to him. Yet this causes him to trust people that shouldn't be trusted, since he expects people to do kind things for no return, and causes him to neglect those close to him, including Rem and Amelia. It might be easy to look at the issues and feel no remorse or recognition towards Subaru's behavior, but picture it like this. Subaru has no experience dealing with women, is sent to a magical world that his society has told him would give him power, recognition, and popularity, and he's rewritten the fate of his friends multiple times. With all these things together, you can imagine he would start to feel entitled, and his entitlement would carry over to his relationships, as he's learning how to form a relationship for the first time. This doesn't make it right, however. In the end, he's still entitled, and he believes he knows how the world works, but each time he attempts to work out these ideas, it backfires and each time it backfires, he's hit harder and harder. At first, he doesn't accept that the problem is him, instead viewing others as toxic themselves, people who don't understand how he would make the world a better place. As the evidence starts to pile up, however, you can see how his worldview crumbles slowly around him. He starts to feel powerless, and everyone around him is calling him pathetic, useless and foolish. This crushes him, and instead of fixing his ego, he's utterly destroyed. He believes all his attempts are futile, and this causes him to feel powerless, believing no one could ever need him. With his pride stripped of him and his reason to fight gone, he decides to give up. His overconfidence is revealed to actually just be self-hatred. He's ashamed of his previous lifestyle, Subaru slowly realizes his confidence is not just a charade to others, but to himself as well. And he slowly starts to realize that he hasn't changed. Instead of using the time to fix his ego issues, he instead goes to the other extreme. Something like this isn't completely uncommon in real life, as when people realize their toxic issues with their ideals, they have a tendency to flock over into the exact opposite direction and then embrace another toxic ideal. At this point, we know Subaru is entitled, has ego issues, hates himself, and he hurts those closest to him. Yet, that's what makes him a good character. Negative traits as well as positive traits are what make him, well, realistic and a relatable character. The fact that Subaru's flaws are understandable makes his story that much more compelling, as you're trying to relate to him as a human being, and he's not some perfect character you can just self-insert into. However, he maintains his positive traits, which allows you to root for him. It's what he does with these flaws that turns him from a protagonist into a hero. A hero and a protagonist are oftentimes confused as the same thing. However, that's not true. A protagonist is simply the main character of a story, but the hero is a person who's admired for notable qualities. However, can notable qualities exist without flaws? Flaws are the sole reason good traits are admirable. Without a sense of self-preservation, courage is just recklessness. Without a sense of ego, humility is just poor self-image and self-hate. Without flaws and human traits that need to be overcome, admirable traits lack all meaning. What makes Subaru a great hero is not his fall, but his rise up again from these traits. When Subaru is plagued by self-doubt, Rem saves him by reminding him of all the good he has done, especially for her. And in the process, he turns his self-hatred into humility. With this humility, Subaru also changes his worldview. He takes the advice of those around him, and in the process, slowly becomes the person he wants to be. Rewatching the series, you gain a real feel for the character growth Subaru and Amelia have to go through. They don't even feel like the same characters at the beginning of the series. 
making Subaru a protagonist that you can really root for, as you have to see him overcome not only the world, but himself. This makes his best traits even more admirable. In the end, he successfully fixes his relationship with Amelia, viewing her as a person and replacing his dream, his ideal, with an actual relationship. It's more satisfying to see Subaru at his best, because you've had to see him overcome his worst, and you better understand his journey as a character. Modern anime, for me at least, has been plagued with very uninteresting characters that fit perfectly into power fantasies. Seeing a protagonist have to struggle for a change, not only against the world, but himself too, is a refreshing change of pace. He's not a complete character at the beginning of the series, and to an extent, he's not a complete at the end. But watching him grow through his understandable flaws, and seeing him work on becoming a better person, is what makes him such a compelling character. And it's what turns ReZero's protagonist into a hero.